Hello everybody, I feel like this video is long overdue. I've said many stuff in the past like memes and just absolutely blasting R as to why it's terrible. And yet again, you see in the title here, I made a video called Why I Hate R. Here's the thing, this video is not going to be just an absolute rant as to why it's bad. I will actually give a positive use case for R and why you might want to use it. And then I will discuss why my opinion is what it is. So here's the thing. Okay, first positive use case for R. R is easy. Okay, it, it genuinely it is easy compared to pretty much any programming language. It's not going to be hard to pick up. You're not getting going to get a, uh, annoyed with like C and C++ pointers or uh, all this Java bloatware. Uh, I don't think that's the right word for code. But you know what I mean? There's like tons and tons of Java code that does basically nothing. Um, it's just an easy language to pick up. You should, uh, with no programming experience, be able to just jump into the language, start doing things that are actually useful, like plotting graphs. Uh, it's never going to go away. Just a plot of you know two graphs going across. It's very very useful. Um, getting more into the statistics, like looking at various uh, correlation coefficients, uh, variance, and averages, that type of thing. It's really really good at that. Uh, manipulating data, like doing simple transformations, SQL style transformations. It's very, very good at that. There's a whole library to do all of that. Um, and of course, for like raw, like actual mathematical statistics that uh, mathematicians or statisticians and uh, especially like medical healthcare people would use a lot of, it is very, very good at that. It's very easy to jump in and uh, just perform analysis that's going to be helpful for people. And it's got some uh, not really huge into deep learning, but uh, most of the simple, more classical style machine learning. It's got those algorithms like clustering uh, and the basic super supervised learning algorithms as well, uh, which are honestly even more rigorous than a lot of the times you would need. Like people are using deep learning for stuff that you really don't need it for. Uh, there's many classical algorithms that will do quite well. Um, but anyways, R is really good at uh, those things. It's great at statistics. It is used a lot in healthcare. Like this isn't even really uh, an argument. Uh, it, it, as many of you have pointed out in the comments, R is used very, very heavily in healthcare and status, uh, like statistics space. There's reasons that there's um, many courses like the John Hopkins courses that teach R because not just because it's like some introduction to math or whatever, and it's easy, but because it's actually used. There's uh, like very heavy duty stuff that, um, you know, I've, I'm a statistician by train, I got uh, from school anyway, uh, and I've gotten pretty far into the ways that you can use R in statistics. Uh, so I'm not just some Python fanboy, by the way, it's not that I'm like, I, I've learned one language, and I'm just telling you why it's so much better. I've used R uh, many, many times in school and a little bit on my own. Uh, I've learned like Java, C++, C, uh, pretty much all of the really common languages. And this is where my opinion is about to stand anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm not just some, some R fanboy here. Or, no, I'm, I, whoa, I am definitely not an R fanboy. I am not just a Python fanboy because I have only know Python. I know all of these different languages, at least I used to. And the reason I think that Python is so much better here, even though I just said all these great things about R, it is easy, it is, it does all these things that you would need to use. Um, and it's it's used in like higher up and higher, higher up in spaces. However, the reason why I guess the title of the video is what it is, is because it's not enough. It's not enough. Because once you get to the point where you are good at coding, even if you just use R, it's still a fairly sophisticated programming language, you will learn almost all of the important aspects of coding, uh, not all of them, but most of them. So even if you even once you get really, really good at coding, uh, and you're up in the space doing incredible things, you are relatively stuck as an employee. And this is fine. Uh, many of you enjoy being employees. Almost the entire world is employees and not entrepreneur type people. But here's the thing. I don't mean just you're stuck as an employee, as in like you, you have a job. That's totally fine. I could care less. The thing is, you will act and act as an employee, even in your role as an employee. Uh, you want to do some cool thing for your boss, you have a cool idea, and you think it's going to move you up in the world. Using just R, it's going to be very difficult to build a product. Okay, they're just not really 
products aren't really built with R. It's more for data analysis, and uh, you could do some backend stuff that's automated through R, but they're not going to make full form products. Well, okay, so what is a product? Basically, the whole point of making a product is a user experience. Okay, that's why there's people that are called like UX designers that, you know, they focus on user experience like itself. And if you were to try and impress your boss with something, sure, it might just be with some cool analysis they, did, they didn't expect. But the real amazing solutions, these things that come out of Google, um, where you know they internally they come up with ideas and they spawn into amazing new things, like you know a Amazon came up with AWS, um, which obviously sp uh, spawned into a multi-billion-dollar company. They're they're not going to use R for that because it's just stuck as analysis. And so you are going to use something like Python that can use Django as a backend library, or even something like simpler like Flask, or, um, you know, whatever the fast API, there's so many of those types of things. And if you wanted to make like a game illustration style thing, there's Pygame or those other libraries. And if you wanted to do this kind of thing in R, it's just not going to work. Now, here's the thing, you're probably sitting here thinking, Greg, I don't care, I'm a data analyst. And I don't want to do any of this stuff. Well, then I got tough, tough, like news for you here. You're going to have a tough time advancing really high up in the world. There's going to be many, many, many of you that are in, in like an analyst style role. And without learning a tool that has the ability to adapt to the real development world like Python, it's you're going to be a little stagnated here, not guaranteed, but much more likely. Because you are as an as an employee, as an entrepreneur, or whatever it is, trust me that you should want to step outside your comfort zone and build something that's going to be a great user experience for others. If you are using Python, which has all of the stuff that R has as well, pretty much everything that it's got, uh, maybe aside from some of the super, super advanced stuff, which you could obviously build yourself or someone is probably working on. Python has got it. Python is easier. Uh, it's not easier to code, but it's easier to kind of uh, adapt to and do uh, things that R is going to struggle with, like classes and uh, kind of more traditional coding stuff. Python has got your back for that, and it's very easy to code, and people like coding in Python. It's one of the most loved languages. If you don't like the style that it's indented, I sort of I get that. Some of my errors are because of the indented thing, uh, and brackets would probably solve that problem to be honest but I don't like how it visualizes like seeing all the brackets everywhere like in JavaScript it, it does actually play with my eyes funny so I, I like that it's just indented um, but anyway syntax aside trust me it's a very nice language to to use to code in so is R and so you're gonna like coding in both and so at the beginning I'm just saying why would you choose a language that's going to be extremely limiting to you because the more and more you get into R the more and more you're going to want to stay in R. And of course, you can learn other languages. I have gotten, I have done big projects in Java, uh, in C and C++, and yet I don't use any of them anymore. I use Python, HTML, CSS, and I guess ChatGPT does the JavaScript for me. Um, but genuinely, like you're going to hit a point where it's like, how do I advance? Yes, you could study your study your butt off and just learn all these new things and like theory and then start applying them. That is, of course, an option. But to really hit home to with the people and with your boss, who is also a person, of course, you're probably going to want to build something that gives a great user experience. And, you know, there's ways to visualize information in R, uh, of course, like the, the notebooks or like, you know, simple shiny applications that can uh, do a little bit of response. But it's not great. And if you are, are to use Python, if you were to switch or if you originally learned Python, it will do everything for you. It's growing absolutely massively. The odds that you know you have to actually write something totally by scratch is is pretty low. Like ChatGPT can probably do it for you, uh, or you know there's a library that's very easy to use, as well as ChatGPT can probably use that library for you. It's just it's growing like crazy. And of course, you know ChatGPT could use give you stuff in R as well. But if you are to learn Python, and then you just get ChatGPT's help with, you know, struggling through some HTML, CSS, and, uh, you know, maybe some of the higher up stuff if you want, like React and whatever. Um, 
your your opportunities are just going to be endless here because now suddenly you've went outside the zone of being a data analyst to just full on developer slash entrepreneur. And once you have the feeling of you're able to actually build something that people are going to fully use, people don't use data analysis, just your boss uses data analysis so that they can make, um, you know, throughout the organization, they can make incredible applications. If you can be on the in, on your own that can make these applications that look good, okay, trust me, like I know that you probably don't care about HTML, CSS, like I'm, a, I'm an analyst, I don't care how this stuff looks. But transform your mind into, hey, say you know this stuff now, if you were to know this stuff, oh, well, there's all this stuff that you know, the amazing data analyst, um, machine learning stuff that people don't know, and then you can build applications for them. Well, then yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome, actually. So I think it's mostly just a, a trick in the mind, where most people, you know, you get really specialized, people say, like, get super, super specialized. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn user experiences and building applications. Of course, you should be specialized in something. Um, but you should also be broad in your scope of being able to deliver that information. And of course, there's ways to visualize and build products with R. It's just that people don't do it because you really shouldn't do it. Like Python is just better. Of course, JavaScript, like I haven't talked about JavaScript. I don't really know JavaScript, so why would I talk about it? But there, in an application I'm building right now, there is a fair amount of JavaScript because uh, ChatGPT can kind of help me with that. It's very similar to Python, and so I can read it pretty well, um, especially if you've used JSON before. That's like J is literally for JavaScript. Probably the S is as well, JavaScript object notation. I'm guessing that's what it's called. Anyways, it's basically the same thing. You would use that in both Python and JavaScript. Um, and so you can you could probably expand from Python to JavaScript, or if you were just to learn JavaScript off uh, uh, like immediately, that's not a bad idea as well, because you can learn stuff like Node.js and front end libraries that are going to do this. Now, so here's the thing, like if you're talking about purely, purely data analytics, sure, R is probably the better choice or at least an equal choice, but I feel bad for the people that are super stuck doing only that for your entire life. Like the world is changing so quickly right now. Like think about it. ChatGPT is getting very, or it is very, very good at doing data analysis work. And I'm not saying that data analyst is dead. I think it's very useful. Um, and and ChatGPT is just going to help with that. But that stuff's going to keep getting better and better. And the real power to everybody lies in creating an experience or a product or a service or just a free experience for what's helpful to people, what people like to see, what's just what provides them value. Analytics in a notebook, sorry, it doesn't provide a whole lot of value. And this is uh, it reminds me of someone something else I did recently, where, you know, if there's an interview for a, um, like a company, and then they do this kind of take home assignment where they say, uh, we don't need to write any, you don't need to write any code for this, we're just going to give you a problem and tell us how you would solve it. No, write an absolute ton of code, solve their problem for them the best that you absolutely can. And look, look, that's that's going to provide a great user experience for the people that are viewing this. If someone just told you how to solve it versus someone actually solving it, of course, this is much more useful. And if you make it look pretty, now it's actually just an enjoyable experience and you're a way better candidate. So seriously, like it, genuinely think about it. I'm not saying don't be a data analyst. I think it's more important than ever to learn all of these skills. Uh, but you're going to have to at least I really, really recommend, and I think you would want to, I think you truly want to, if you can convince yourself that you're able to learn these learn these skills, learn HTML, CSS, a backend framework like Django is really not that bad, especially with the help of ChatGPT, learn JavaScript and you've got all of it there. Um, and then you can step outside your zone from employee to awesome employee and to entrepreneur if you ever want to and you can be both you can be not you can be an employee and you can be entrepreneurial in your job or you can be an employee and you can get a side hustle on like on the side and maybe slowly pivot to that and make a company if you ever wanted to i know that probably most of you don't want to do that um but trust me you know opportunities are limitless once you can create user experiences for people um and so anyways that's my case if you want to use r 
be my guest, but you probably will be limited at some point. If you are to use Python or JavaScript, your, your opportunities are limitless. That's what I have to say. See you guys later.